the company also published guidelines and tools required for uh, developers to you know, help them distribute this. In the EU, uh, opening Safari on 17.4 will provide users with a new screen where they can pick their default browser. The options include Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Opera, and Brave. Once set as default, iOS will also use that browser and its rendering engine across all system apps. That's another uh, that's a, EU change there. Dude, that's a huge update. That is a yeah. huge update that people have been wanting for a long time. Mm -hmm. To comply with the new EU mandates... Oh, I already spoke. Uh, yeah. We passed that. It will allow third-party app developers and banks to use the iPhone's NFC chip for tap to pay. Uh, Apple will allow cloud-based game streaming apps like NVIDIA's GeForce Now and Xbox Cloud Gaming on the App Store. You won't have to, you know use the sort of hacky solution where you go through it for a web browser anymore. The first beta of 17.4 adds several new emojis, including a phoenix emoji, a lime slice, a brown mushroom, a broken link, and smiley faces shaking their heads up and down, uh, and several more there. Apple is expanding SharePlay support to the HomePod and Apple TV with iOS 17.4. This will allow your friends and family members to control media playback on your HomePod and Apple TV after you've given them the requisite permission. And uh, here's another big one. Apple is enhancing stolen device protection. Right now in iOS 17.3, the security delay of one hour, which triggers when somebody, uh, you know, steals your device and, you know, they get your passcode, they try to change your Apple ID stuff so you're locked out of your iCloud account and they can't, you know, put your phone in lost mode or anything. That security feature currently only uh, triggers when you're away from familiar locations like home and work. But, you know, if you're if you're in a situation where work is in a bar or a nightclub or, you know, if you don't feel safe at home, those those, those exceptions can, uh, you know, still provide some security holes. But iOS 17.4 adds an always setting. So you'll. Uh, so no matter what, if you try to change your iCloud password from your phone, it'll it'll require a face ID scan, you know, making it more secure. That's super useful. But here's here's the biggest one that you were alluding to: auto-generated transcripts in Apple Podcasts. This is basically like the live lyrics you get in music, except for the podcast you're listening to. So if you're running this, uh, if you're playing this very podcast in the Apple Podcasts app, you can you can turn on the po the transcription right now and see the words that I'm about to say. Uh, uh, before I even say them. So um, it'll automatically generate transcripts um, in an incoming update, and it applies to a variety of languages, uh, not just English. So if I were to suddenly begin speaking in Italian, you'd see that too. So that would be amazing. If you just suddenly yeah. started speaking in Italian, I would be so impressed if you did that. <laughs> is that, is be that a possibility? It would be great could do that for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, your camera got all wacky again. Look at this. This, this show, it, it's fallen off the tracks all episode long. So look, we got... We got Lewis sitting there frozen in time, which I could fix quite easily, but I don't think I'm going to. For some reason, it just left his camera image on. And now it's zooming in on nothing but your forehead. So that's a lot of fun. Um, oh, wonderful. I, I could fix that, but I'd have to switch to a view and show everyone the sausage. And, you know, sometimes I get complaints about that. So let's see if we can just go back and forth and see if it fixes it. Uh, so I was playing around with this this feature last night, and I was like, dude, this is something that I didn't even know that I needed. And I'm talking about the auto-generated trans transcripts in Apple Podcasts. So like you, you press play on a podcast and now there's a new button that you can use to show the actual written um, text from the podcast, which is huge, right? If you want to just read it. But it's also groundbreaking when you're trying to find where in a podcast they said something because there's a, a search box and you can just type in what you're trying to find, like a like a blurb of what they said and it will take you right to that point in the podcast and you tap the text and it will immediately start playing from that point in the podcast dude it is this is one of the best features that's come to a podcast app i think perhaps in the history of the show and for me personally it's super useful because like when we do uh like sponsor spots i have to show i have to like give them an indication of where in the show like those spots have taken place and like before, I had to like fast forward and rewind and figure out exactly where it happened. And now I can just open up the text and search for the the sponsor name. And it's like, boom, it takes me right to it. So it's like a huge time savings for me. But if you've ever been in a position where you're trying to find something within a podcast that was said, 
this is going to make your life uh, way easier. <laughs> or if you're like, hey, which cultcast episode was it where Erfan was talking about his rabbit with syphilis? You, know, you can just search for it. Oh, yeah, that's going to gonna find, be a big oh, one. Oh, it was episode 632. That's going to be a big one for sure. People are going to definitely want to revisit that. Uh, we kind of breezed over some of the other stuff. Um, Gurren saying that you like Frozen Lewis. I do too, actually. <laughs> look, look how warm and happy he looks. Like he's giving you like that... I'm just a pleased grandfather look, looking down on us as we do this show. I don't know why it the, did that this time, but the face of a man about to leave the cult cast. Yeah, that's that's what it is, right? It's exit face. That's what we call it. Um, let me see here. Let me go back to the story. And I just want to take a look at some of these other features. And we'll go back to some of the um the emotes, because I didn't show these earlier. Um I, I always love emojis. I call them emotes, emojis. So I love getting new ones. They added a bunch of really cool ones here. Um, let me see. There was something else I was going to say. Oh, well, only about the browser engine stuff. Like That might seem like a small thing, but forever, all the browsers on iOS were the same. There was really no reason to use Chrome over Safari. And Apple has finally opened that up so that people could use different browser engines. So like there, there will actually be differences now between browsers. Like if you go use Opera or Chrome or whatever, Google is now going to have the opportunity to actually make their browser better, which they couldn't really do before because they had to use WebKit, which is what Apple uses. And there was there, it's like they're all they're different browsers, but they're kind of all the same browser because they all operated in the same way. I don't really know if opening up tap to pay for third parties is going to make a real world difference in our life because I imagine that most people just use, you know, Apple pay anyway. Um, but I know that uh, alternate payment systems are pretty popular in the EU. So maybe this is going to be a, a feature that's more important to them. And then of course, I know you mentioned cloud streaming. We talked about this before, but I can't overemphasize like how groundbreaking this is going to be. If you have a subscription to um, like Xbox Game Pass or something, you'll now be able to actually stream those games to your iPhone and to your iPad, which you couldn't do before. Microsoft was trying to bring that technology to iOS and, and Apple wouldn't let them. And maybe even Steam, like maybe you'll be able to stream your Steam games to like your iPad, which currently you can't do and is a huge pain in the butt to have a steam pc and and stream that content anywhere else except for a monitor plugged in via, via hdmi or something i know because i recently went through all this trying to figure out how to do that and ultimately what i decided on was just moving a tv into the cult command center so that i could stream stuff to the cult commander which is right over here and i would love to be able to do things um i would love to be able to stream games to my ios devices and this opens up that opportunity, which would be really cool and is a really cool opportunity for gamers. I think I sufficiently flogged that horse. And I think we're kind of like running out of stories here, except for, let's just skip this iPhone 16 story. I, I This was Lewis's. We're almost running out of time. We could maybe work this in next week. But Ming-Chi Kuo was essentially saying that the iPhone 16 isn't going to be changing that much from a design perspective, which I think we all expected. I think internally that will probably not be the case, but new design language, they're going to hold on to this design language for, for probably at least three years. We all kind of expected that. So I think that's probably like the, the bulk of the story there. 